This Fan Run Podcast is brought to you by DraftKings. This Thanksgiving, be thankful for all the free bets. That's right, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, has a turkey day no-brainer you can't miss. New customers can bet just $1 on any Thanksgiving NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code FANRUN in all caps. Bet just $1 on any Thanksgiving NFL game and win $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. That's promo code FANRUN in all caps this Thanksgiving day at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older in Tennessee only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text the Tennessee Red Line 1 800 889 9789. Welcome in to the Billy Stats Best Bets podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. An official sports betting partner of the NFL. Today is November the 28th. And I'm your host, Billy Stats. Some call me Bama Billy, Bay Area Billy, Barnes Bash and Billy, Round Ball Billy, Basketball Billy, Bracket Billy, Billy Legs. It doesn't matter what you want to call me. All that matters is that you're tuning into this podcast and I can't thank you enough I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving I hope there weren't too many grandparents out there trying to talk politics and bringing the mood down I hope everyone enjoyed family time enjoyed some time off and enjoyed some Tennessee wins on Friday the basketball team took care of business against Tennessee Tech And when I say take care of business, I mean they won the game. They didn't cover. They didn't play well, especially in the first half. But they won. And I think in college basketball, and especially a game like this, you just hope to win. There are multiple times all season long where you see teams, better teams, lose to teams that they shouldn't. Take Kansas and Dayton, for example. The other day, Kansas ranked top five in the nation gets beat by Dayton. And now, granted, it was on a last-second shot, but it's Dayton, and they're not having a good season. Dayton lost earlier in the year to Linscombe and Austin P. So they're not a very good team this year, and they were able to take down Kansas. Take a look at Iona and Alabama. Iona was undefeated going into that Alabama game, but they hadn't beaten anyone worth anything really and they were able to take down Alabama by four points and so anytime Tennessee can get a win be happy with that despite not looking the best in the first half Tennessee did beat Tennessee Tech 80 to 69 to move to four and one on the season next game is Tuesday against Presbyterian and then a road trip to Colorado on Saturday December the 4th your leading scorer for Tennessee against Tennessee Tech was Olivia Kumwa. He went 8-for-8 eight eight from the field, including 2-for-2 two two from the three-point line. He grabbed four rebounds, one assist, one turnover, one block, and scored 18 points. Kenny Chandler also had 15. Santiago Vescovi had 13. John Fulkerson had 14. Really strong showing from Fulkerson that game. And Brandon Brandon Hundley Hatfield had 12. He was 6 for 7 from the field. He played well. I'm giving you a bunch of scoring stats from post players, but I think that's Tennessee's weakness this year so far. If you take a look at Kumwa, against Tennessee Martin, he scored in double figures. Against East Tennessee State, he scored in double figures. And against Tennessee Tech, he scored in double figures. Against Villanova, he scored zero. And against North Carolina, he scored seven. If we get this type of performance out of Kamwa all season long, then, all right, well, Tennessee will win the games that they're supposed to win. And then when they play a good team, you're going to have to hope that Brandon Hundley Hatfield and John Fulgerson steps up. It's really discouraging to see how awful 
come while he's played against two good teams. And now maybe he's just getting his feet underneath him, and we'll see what he does against Colorado and Texas Tech coming up. There's Memphis on the schedule, Arizona on the schedule, and then you jump into SEC play. So he's going to have a couple more games to kind of get ready for big athletic post players that he's going to see around the SEC. He's got to be better, man. He's got to at least try to get to that 10-point mark and be aggressive on the glass. But the main thing with him is he can still score 23 points and then give up 23 because he gets lost defensively. And I think that's the most frustrating part because he is long and he is big and he can jump and he can protect the rim, but he's always in the wrong spot. And so if Tennessee's going to do anything this season, Cumwall is going to have to come a long way. And I know if you look at the stats, it's going to show that he's having a pretty good year, but he's going to have to do that against good teams and he's going to have to be much better defensively. One of the issues against Tennessee Tech was Tennessee wasn't being aggressive. And I saw a lot of people say, like, Vescovi needs to stop shooting. But when you only attempt two free throws in the first half and your point guard, Kenny Chandler, is not getting to the rack and you're not generating fouls, somebody's got to shoot the ball. And I kind of want that to be Vescovi, especially because Powell was out with the flu. And, of course, Josiah and Jordan James is battling injuries as well. I don't think it's a problem that Vescovi is shooting a bunch of threes. He's 17 for 46 on the season. That's 37% from the field. That's really good. We just got to find a way to get to the rack. And it appears that Kenny Chandler can get to the rim whenever he wants. He's just got to do it. He's got to want to. We'll dive more into Tennessee when they play Presbyterian on Tuesday. And then, of course, Colorado on Saturday. I've ran the numbers, and the most confident model that I like to use hasn't shot out any college basketball games today. Now, I do have a couple other models that aren't hitting at as high as a percentage, but I can still give you some of those games if you want to tell along. One of them was Florida to cover the 21 and a half point spread against Troy they are up 49 to 20 at halftime that's not going to help you a good game to watch later on if you're not tuned into the NFL at four o'clock Wofford is playing Georgia Georgia is a one and a half point favorite the Bulldogs are two and four in the season they haven't played very well Wofford is four and two they like to shoot the three ball I kind of like Wofford there at plus one. If you can if you can hold on and that line moves to maybe two, two and a half, definitely take Wofford. Belmont and Dayton at four o'clock. Belmont is a two and a half point favorite. I like them there. Again, these are not my most confident models, but these models are hitting on a pretty good clip. So you can still tell these games if you want. I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to play them yet or not. Villanova at LaSalle. Model likes Villanova to cover the huge 18.5 point spread there. None of these are high confidence, but uh, they are hitting at a pretty good clip, and I might play some of them a little bit later. Moving on to college football. There's no college football games today, but I just wanted to recap the Tennessee football season. Josh Heupel takes the Vols to a 7-5 and record in year one. I think if you go back to August and September and you say, hey, I, I'll give you 7-5 and five right now. You don't have to worry about it. A lot of Tennessee fans would have taken it. A lot of Tennessee fans were saying maybe 3-9 and nine, and then the ceiling being, you know, 8-4. 7-5 uh, and five would have been a really, really, really good season. Most fans were saying like 5-7, and 6-6. Seven, six and six. And I think Heibel did a really good job. I think you can sit back and say you're happy with 7-5 and five, and you feel confident that whoever Tennessee is going to play in a bowl game, that they're going to win. They're going to play in a very slow Big Ten team that has had an okay season. But I don't, I don't think any of those teams can really stop Tennessee's offense or a Clemson team possibly that's playing a little bit better, but they don't scare me. I just think Tennessee has a great opportunity to go 8-5 and five here. I mean, if you think about it, if the ball bounces the right way a couple times, if Heupel starts hooker or if there's a challenge here or a timeout here or a different play call here, 
Tennessee's easily eight and four, maybe even nine and three, because you you have to think that they they most certainly are beating Pitt there. And uh, Florida's Florida. If you play Florida later on in the season, yeah, I think Tennessee wins, but I, I still chalk that down as a loss. And then you had Ole Miss. You had Ole Miss. If Hooker maybe stays in the game and doesn't get hurt, if Tillman makes that catch, if Milton doesn't run out of bounds, like there's a ton of different things that you can say that Tennessee's just a couple plays away from nine and three, and that's pretty amazing. If you look ahead to next season, it really does set up, and, and this is not me being a sheep at all, but it really does set up for the narrative to go from five and seven, six and six, seven and five to seven and five, eight and four, nine and three. And if the ball bounces the right way, maybe ten and two. Like I, you know, you never know. And I think that's a huge step for a coach in year two. A coach that lost a lot before he even got here, like 23 players, and even more throughout the season with injuries and some other transfers. That's really impressive to say that year two, you should be looking at seven and five, eight and four, nine and three. Overall, good season. I like Heupel so far. I really, I really can't say anything bad about him. Like, there's a couple times to where. I question second down play calling and and even third down play calling sometimes, but the offense is so efficient and it scores so well. Like it's hard to even criticize those small problems when they don't work out because majority of the time they are working out overall great season and uh, looking forward to the bowl game, looking forward to next season. And you know, if, if the incident away, if the playoff committee can kind of work together There could be a 12-team playoff next year, and you have to like Tennessee's chances, at least for an outside shot, at a 12-team playoff. I was taking a look at the NFL lines today, and I just don't really love any of them. The NFL has been very difficult to figure out this year. I mean, you have the Titans, who had the best record in the AFC, and then they lose to Houston and Jacksonville. So I really don't know what to think with the NFL. You know, you had the Vikings last week beat the Packers, but now they are a a three-and-a-half-point underdog to San Francisco, a 5-5 49ers team who's not very good. You got the Chargers minus two-and-a-half at Denver. I kind of like that there if I'm going to take a bet on the NFL this week. Cleveland plus three at Baltimore, it's the Sunday night game at 820. That might be a same game parlay type of game for me. Tell those basketball picks if you like them. Again, not the high confidence level, not the high confidence model, but a model that is winning on the season. I'll be back again next week to discuss some college basketball. We're about to go full college basketball. There's only a couple more weeks of college football left championship Saturday and a couple bowl games in the playoffs so almost full swing college basketball let's get ready to make some money I want to thank you for listening I want to thank DraftKings Sportsbook for presenting this podcast and as always I want to thank the 37 because without you guys none of this would be possible be back again next week catch you then